In today's video, we're going to react to some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Not one of these people are real. Someone may have actually just proven this. So this guy right here is James Gates. He is a theoretical physicist and extremely, extremely clever guy. What he found was literal computer code embedded in reality. Now this is where we get into something called string theory, which is a bit complex, so stick with me, I'll explain to the best I can. So first of all, you've got Einstein's theory of relativity, everything big like planets. Then you've got quantum physics, which is literally the opposite, so everything small like particles, atoms. And in this area, the general rules of physics don't apply, things, you know, like gravity. Now, Einstein's theory and quantum physics, they do link together with the Big Bang. Literally like everything that is big now, like the planets, all used to be small. But these two needed something to link them together, and what is that? That's where string theory comes in. String theory literally links in quantum and general relativity. Now, string theory suggests, like strings on a guitar, they vibrate at different frequencies, right? String theory, the strings vibrate in different waves of matter. Now, this literally changes the way you look at everything in the whole world, because everything you see, every particle, is essentially a string vibrating. Everybody on Earth is just a particle vibrating at a different frequency. So what's this got to do with this James guy and the computer code? Well, thanks for sticking with me. Let's go. So Dr. James took a look at a sequence of codes that came from string theory. And he found binary code. Like actual binary code. This is literally only used by things like computers to compress data. It's what powers all of the search engines you use. The hub. Google. So it literally proves if we break down matter and energy far enough, we can find actual computer code in our reality. So does this mean we are genuinely living in a computer simulation. That's a pretty interesting theory. I don't know how one breaks it down to the point where they can actually see the binary code of life. I really would like to know how someone breaks down something so much to the point where they're like, ah, yeah, you know, that looks like ones and zeros. I guess that's why I'm not a scientist. The following footage is from a woman named Lux. She recorded this during a thunderstorm in Florida. And really, the reason why we're sharing it is because it's weird it's truly paranormal she captures something that doesn't sound like thunder it's something she's never heard before nor have i ever heard before during a thunderstorm take a look and listen to this video keep in mind this footage has not been edited altered or any sound added to it this is the actual footage from her take a look and tell me what you think okay i don't know if my phone will pick this up or not but I've been outside for like 15 minutes and the thunder sounds bizarre. Uh, like not, I've... What is that? I'm a seventh generation Floridian and I have never heard thunder like that. That is, what is that? I've actually been seeing more and more of these videos popping up online where it sounds extremely weird after thunder and lightning. Kind of like something's bouncing off of ice. And it actually does make me wonder a little bit, if there's a firmament above us, what if something is hitting it and it's causing that sound? It sounds like thunder and lightning and it sounds like things bouncing off of ice. That's a pretty interesting theory. But for anyone out there that actually knows what these sounds are coming from, please leave a comment down below because I really am curious. Were all knights in armor human? In the early modern period, animal motifs were commonly used in military gear and decorations. These zoomorphic ornaments were used on war-related items like shields, helmets, armor, horse gear, banners, weapons, and trophies. Manuals from that time even included instructions for decorating artillery with the detailed figures of animals and humans. Military guides also suggested incorporating animal imagery into battle equipment to inspire and intimidate. But what happens when you combine all the animals into one? Does the warrior become a chimera or a monster? And is that why some suits of armor are so ridiculous? Silvio Cassini was an Italian sculptor who was a pupil of Michelangelo and was employed by him to execute decorative grotesque, including trophies, particularly for the Medici Chapel in San Lorenzo. 
Within the chapel, these military trophies guarded the tombs. One of the tombs was of Lorenzo II de' Medici, the father of Catherine de Medici, also known as the Serpent Queen or Black Widow. Allegedly, she was deep into the occult. Did these sculptures reveal too much? Pope Clement VII, who was also a Medici, was not pleased with Michelangelo's results. He ordered the grotesque decor to be whitewashed in 1556. I mean, I'm pretty certain that all knights in armor were human. It would not surprise me, though, if they were in unique looking pieces of armor, if it did give them a persona or an attitude of that creature or whatever that armor looked like. Because some of them armors are extremely aggressive looking, and I could only imagine being in something like that probably also makes you feel extremely aggressive. But as far as it being chimera, things like that, I don't really necessarily believe that. There is no way Americans can smell the rain. Apparently, Americans can smell when it's about to rain. If this is true, you get taught some Houdini shit from birth. Because that is ridiculous. Someone tell me if this is true or not in the comment section. I can smell before it rains. It, it's kind of got like this dirt scent to it. So to answer this person's question in America, I do believe people can smell when the rain's coming. It's been a thing my whole life and I definitely can smell it. And I can also smell snow. Snow has a very specific smell to it as well. But when it's about to rain, you can always smell the dirt in the air. That's the best way for me to describe it. So somebody caught a Jurassic Park dinosaur mosquito on the camera. In Houston, we have a problem. Because if we have mosquitoes the size of a Yorkie, hold on, let's think about it now. How is it going to eat? One meal would have to be a pint of blood. And he's sitting there trying to poke it with a stick instead of grabbing the flamethrower, the grenade launcher, the bazooka, and annihilating this monstrous creature. I definitely would like to annihilate that mustacherous creature. That is the biggest mosquito that I've ever seen. If that's real, and by the looks of them tapping on the screen and it flying away, it looks like it's a real mosquito. I've seen some really big mosquitoes, but nothing like that. If I seen that, I don't think I would be able to go outside again. Little did we know this song the whole time was a psyop. You know what a psyop is? No, it's Pretty much something to like try and control the population. No. No. Yeah, this song. But Listen carefully. Okay, okay. Hold on. Do you need to like that like that this song, it went through like 14 different artists, fam. They had the song made and they were trying to figure out who would be the best fit. They have Demi Lovato version, they have oh, Selena shit. Gomez version, they really have Ariana Grande. Every single artist mm -hmm. that was popping at the time, they had them sing it. Yeah. Now, the theory goes they needed this song to try and hypnotize people. This song went through like, I think, five different producers. Finally, they took it to Zed. The only thing he did differently was add that. It's supposed to be something that you don't notice mm. off a of first listen. It's just something that plays. It breaks pattern. That's what it does. It breaks pattern. Okay. It wouldn't surprise me if most music is altered to brainwash or manipulate in a way. And also, I really am a huge fan of Zed. I remember watching Zed's videos when he was just a YouTuber. It's really cool to see how big he has blown up. How strong were the ancients compared to modern strength athletes? Humans have become unbelievably strong. Eddie Hall deadlifted 500 kilograms. Big Thor deadlifted 501 kilograms. Tom Stoltman lifted a 286 kilogram Atlas stone over a block. How does that compare to the ancients? Well, this is known as the Ferrer stone. It's a boulder that dates back to the 6th century BCE from ancient Greece. It weighs 480 kilograms. Bear in mind the heaviest Atlas stone lifted was 286 kilograms. So this is far heavier. And there's an inscription on the stone that reads, Eumastus, son of Critobolus, lifted me off the earth. This is known as the Biban stone. And again, it dates back to the 6th century BCE from ancient Greece. And on it, it has another inscription. And the inscription reads, Biban, son of Fola, has lifted me above the head with one hand. It weighs 143.5 
kilograms. And if the inscription is right, then a Bibon from ancient Greece lifted a 143 and a half kilogram stone above his head with one hand. There's no one alive today that can do that. Now, some people in the comments section might say, well, the heaviest circus dumbbell that's ever lifted is around 150 kilograms. That's a dumbbell above the head. That's a dumbbell with a nice handle. This is a very awkward boulder, you know, mini boulder. Trying to balance that, lift it above your head. Hmm. I'm not sure anyone can do that today. And then we have this guy the father of progressive overload. Progressive overload when you add a little bit more weight each week and get stronger and bigger. Well, it's credited to this guy, Milo of Croton, because it's said he picked up a young calf, put it on his shoulders and went running and kept doing it every day. And obviously the calf grew into a bull, but he had grown so strong with the weight that he was able to lift the bull and run with it. And they can weigh anywhere from around 500 kilos upwards. So what do you think? Do you think the ancients are stronger than we are today? Honestly, yeah. Probably people from the past were much stronger than we are today. To lift 315 pounds above the head with one hand is really impressive, especially for it being a giant rock. And I can definitely say I am done lifting extremely heavy weights from now on. If you guys were really curious about my last video, a lot of you guys were really concerned saying that I looked sick, that I didn't look well. It's to be honest with you, I was not well during that video. I've been injured at my physical job where I overlifted things. It was not, it was my fault for being dumb and not doing things properly, but I was lifting really heavy motors. It threw my back out. And I, so for anyone that was curious about my last video asking if I was sick, if I was doing okay, I'm doing much better now. I feel a lot better. But then I was not feeling very good. I'm not going to lie to you. I just had a little accident at work on my own behalf. You know, the Bigfoot's <laughs> foot, it's an amazing foot. Which I'm serious. The Sasquatch foot can bend in the middle. What? Yeah, it's got like a hinge in it. Okay. So it can like go straight up a mountain because it has like a hinge. Sure. They call it the mid-tarsal break. Are we, are we talking like toe to heel, like a V? No, we're talking no, like right in the middle, right in the middle. Like, oh, like, like, like your toes go up. You can see it in the footprints of the Sasquatch. It can't be faked because it's so, it's such a unique foot itself. Like there's... no one would think to fake it like that. Yeah. It's, it's just it's so many little details here that you can't fake and you'd have to know anatomy. You'd have to be able to, there was a story where like Sasquatch started where they, these construction workers up near where they filmed the, the Bigfoot were seeing these massive tracks kind of around the area. And then they came back and they saw some tractor tires like being thrown around and a lot of the dudes quit. So like, yeah, that's where the Bigfoot, you know, kind of the, the name comes from. I have personally never heard of this before. I've I've heard of Bigfoot, of course, but I've never heard of the arches in their walk pattern being basically broken up into three different joints. To me, that kind of just sounds like a, a fake foot that has three different joints for movability so that the person that's wearing the big foot can actually maneuver in the foot and it actually moves because it has those joints in them. But that's just my skepticism going off, so I really can't say I don't know anatomy like that. Let me know what you guys think of this. Have you ever heard of this about Bigfoot before? Because like I said, this was a new one to me. Have any of you guys been feeling drained lately? Like y'all don't want to do nothing. Y'all don't want to work. Like you guys are unmotivated. Like what is going on? I'm coming from up there all around us. Let's, let me show you. It's whatever is in the air, whatever you cannot see, could even come from the sun. It's something, it's something that's coming the moment you are exposed to the elements outside. And um, it did not used to be like this, but whatever it is, it is accelerating and it's increasing in intensity. It's whatever's in the air out there. As soon as you step outside your house, it's when your energy starts getting drained. I wasn't out there, but maybe within five to ten minutes, my energy literally got drained from my body when I was exposed to the sun and whatever is up there in the sky. That's a big part of it, too, because I haven't... Um, this is like happening on a regular basis with a lot of people. As soon as you step outside, if you're outside... It doesn't take long, and it, it could even be penetrating inside the houses. That's also draining our energy. 
do you guys feel this like your energy being drained again maybe that's why they're doing whatever they're doing with the sky to keep us from seeing what's really out there now i'm outside quite a bit and i can't say that when i go outside that my energy just gets tapped immediately it does get tapped eventually because I'm working outside and I just get extremely tired. But as much as I've been outside and as much as I've worked outside, I think that I would notice a, a major difference if there was more energy being pulled from me. As you can see, I'm outside quite a bit. I'm very tan. If I roll up my sleeves, you can see how white I am. So... With me being outside so frequently, I, I just don't feel like it's any different than it was 5, 10 years ago. Maybe a little hotter, but nothing out there magically just tapping my energy out, you know? Let me know what you guys think about this. Have you experienced this where you go outside and instantaneously you're drained? Or do you think that maybe it's just the heat, there's a lot of people talking about this, and the more people are talking about it, the more they go outside, they're like, yeah, my energy's drained because... It's just hot out and you're just tired. But in reality, that's just normal. Let me know what you guys think about this. Well, let's talk about the sun being weird lately. More on this in a minute. And yes, it's real. I was on Twitter this morning and I came by this post. And in this post, he is literally saying that these tomatoes are cooking from the inside out. Like you can literally smell them being cooked. What, what's going on? I, I don't ever remember a time in the past where our vegetables got cooked in the garden. You hear... Same thing's happening. They're burning and turning to goo. Like they're being cooked from the inside. Here's another one. This thing was completely fine yesterday, overnight. That happens. It's all burnt right there, literally singed. And you can smell it. It smells like a cooked tomato. It's really, really weird. But it's true. That guy from Georgia wasn't lying. Think about what the sun's doing to you. It's doing this to a tomato. That's crazy. I think we've all noticed a huge difference in the sun, especially the way it makes us feel. I'm part Cherokee, and every summer I get dark brown. I've been in the sun for hours so many times, and it has done nothing to me. Not to mention, I've literally showed you guys where things are burning down outside that otherwise would not normally burn. And this record heat wave we're having, this was like in China or something. Bizarre. And with the crazy sun and crazy heat, look at all these freaking fires. And also in the last few days, someone took a bite out of the sun. It's just, y'all, it's weird. It's not normal. And we're not even going to get into the magnetic field right now. Maybe later. Well, there's more videos about the sun being extremely hot. Now, I do see those tomatoes, and I have experienced tomatoes doing the same thing. And I've, I've experienced tomatoes doing that for many years. If you leave them overly exposed to the sun, those plants also look very thin. It's going to rot your tomato. It's going to basically stew your tomato. As as you've seen, the cucumbers and everything that he had on the table looked fairly healthy because I bet you the plants and the foliage about the cucumbers were probably concealing a lot better. Again, maybe I'm just being highly skeptical about this ultra sun thing, but to me, this is just normal stuff that I've experienced for many, many years of my life. Now, I've never seen three suns in the sky like the image was showing. That is different, and I don't know if that's real or not. And a lot of people in the comments on this particular video, they're just saying that we're being my microwaved, that microwave radiation is going through the air, things like that. And that could very well be. I do not know. I'm not a scientist. I do not read these kind of things. I just know off of personal experience, this really feels kind of like how it's always felt majority of my life. Last night, we saw a grown man with his balls out on live TV and barely anyone's talking about it. Like, it's like normal now. Just a couple of years ago, if you had your balls out on live TV, you would be arrested like seconds later. But now it's like promoted. It's like, yeah, his balls are out. Are they big? I I'm sorry. What is going on? We saw a literal satanic demonic ritual go on last night during the Olympics and no one is really talking about it. No one's, you know, pointing the blame at the directors. Like, what is going on? These people should be in jail. These people should be arrested. These people should never see the day of light ever again. There's no reason why a kid watching the Olympics should have to see some grown man's nutsack. But how does this affect LeBron's legacy? I have not seen anything going on with this Olympic stuff that's going on in Paris, but I have heard a lot of stuff about it going on. That was not a wardrobe malfunction. That should definitely be taken action upon because you cannot bare ball sack just hanging out of your, your drawers. 
that's a little messed up. There's a lot of people that are watching this. There's a lot of children that watch this as well. It, it does seem like we are really heading towards some inappropriate wild times. Leave a comment down below on your feelings about this. I personally am not a huge fan with all the agenda pushing that it seems like live television is doing, and it definitely seems like more and more there is a agenda being forced upon people, or maybe not being forced, but it's definitely being fed. What in the holiest of hells is that? Now before anybody comes in with their smartass remarks, human eyes don't glow. Although it would be a lot cooler if they did. I don't know what that is. If that's not a person, then that needs to get figured out and get gone because that is just disturbing looking. Scariest urban legends from around the world that will seriously change your life. Part one, Japan. Oh boy, trigger warning because this is flipping terrifying. So honestly, if you're easily scared, do not watch this video. Japan is a beautiful country, but it has some dark stories and dark legends that you've probably not heard about before. There are many legends, but the most popular one is actually known as Kayako. Now you may have seen films such as The Grudge or Duon, which are flipping terrifying, so if you haven't, go and watch them, I dare you. But the legend behind this story is way more terrifying than the films. Now the story goes that Kayako was just a normal woman living with her family, she was married and she had a son. One day though, her husband found her diary and started reading it, and it actually appeared that she was cheating on him, and he was not happy with this. So some pretty brutal things happened. He literally slashed her multiple times, broke her ankles, and she was then crawling down the stairs. Now, trigger warning, of course, but you may have seen this in some of the movies where she is crawling down the stairs and it's pretty terrifying. That is obviously what happened after she was brutally attacked by her husband. And this all happened right in front of her son. After passing away, her husband was then found in the streets unalive, but with no physical harm on him, so people were extremely confused. It is believed that because she died in such agony and pain, she is out for revenge and obviously went after her husband and now just lives in the house. Many people say if you go in the house, you can hear her coarse throat groaning and moving around from the loft most of the time. And I will not be going in there. That is a very awful situation to be a part of. If this person really did turn into a ghost and they got revenge on their partner, why would they stick around the house? So that, you know, if especially if they're still deformed as if they were when they passed. I wonder why they would never cross over. Finally, we got another sighting. And holy Christmas, look at this thing right here. This UFO was spotted flying over Curitiba, Brazil. On July 25th, this dude posted a video on YouTube, and look at it. That, I, I don't know about y'all, but that looks like a freaking eyeball staring down, looking at us, saying, what on earth are these people doing right now? Because, what else could it be? I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, it's the military, oh, it's this, oh, it's that, but what it is... Without a doubt, is real. That's the one thing you can't take away from this. That's real. And maybe it is government. Maybe it is government made. Maybe it is secret shit that's made. Regardless, this has been something that's been spoken about for thousands of years. And that thing looks like what they depicted in some of their paintings. I have seen so many of these videos floating around TikTok right now. Comments to these videos are pretty hilarious because it is truly an unidentifiable object. It could be a number of things, but the comments are saying that it's a phantom from Halo. So if anyone has ever played Halo, you know, Master Chief, that does actually look like a phantom. There's also some people saying that that's Lord Frieza's capsule. You know, the little thing that Frieza from Dragon Ball Z flies around in. Very accurate. It does look like that. Leave a comment on what you guys think that actually could be do you think that's aliens or maybe even a governmental airship of some sort i really don't know to me it kind of looks like a flying tent it looks like a tent that's just blowing around in the wind all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and end this video here
I am really sorry I haven't been uploading every day like I normally do. I have had some problems this past week with my own body. Like I was saying earlier in the video, I did throw my back out. But overall, I'm much better now. I'm feeling so much better. I want to thank everyone for all the support. There's no hiding anything from you guys. I should have probably let you guys know in that video because I could tell during video editing that I just wasn't 100% myself. I was in a lot of pain. And hopefully I can get back into uploading these videos on a consistent basis again. Because right now I'm just falling behind and I feel horrible about that because I know you guys are looking forward to the content. I'm looking forward to making the content and I'm pretty certain I'm in a situation where I can do that now. So hopefully you'll start seeing more videos more frequently from me. I'm not hurt anymore. I'm feeling 100% better and I pretty much have my office set up. So there's no excuses not to make any more content for you guys, not to make content for myself. I should be able to get back on the bandwagon and go hard. And as always, if you found any of these clips enjoyable, links are in the description. And with that being said, have a good day.